Hello, everybody. We want to welcome you to September's webinar. We have a little treat for you th uh, today. We are going to be live with some IFMA instructors. Joining me today is Kim Coffey. Uh, she is our Senior Director of Sales and Corporate Partners. Just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items. We want to know where you are viewing us from, so please send in the chat where you're viewing from. Don't forget to like us and share us so that we can reach more facility managers such as yourself. We do have a YouTube channel and we will be live there as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat so that we can get those answered for you. And we also have a couple of other people behind the scenes. We have Cassandra and Daniela. They will be helping us out today. And then our instructors for today will be Aki and Matthews and Lena Thompson. Welcome everybody. So just a little bit about IFMA, we, we want to share what our vision is and it is to lead the future of the built environment to make the world a better place. That sounds um, lofty, but if you think about what's going on, health and safety issues, sustainability, um, environmental concerns, facility managers truly do have that impact and can make that world a better place. So that is our vision and our mission is to advance collective knowledge, value, and growth for facility management professionals to perform at their highest level. We've been around for over 40 years, y'all, with um, more than 139 chapters, more than 22,000 members, and we are present in over 100 countries. So we are absolutely a globally focused facility management association. We're so pleased to have you with us and pleased to welcome our instructors, our live instructors today. Yes. So up first, we have Akian. She is a facilities operation director at the International Port of Spain. Currently, she uh, teaches our finance and business module along with our leadership and strategy module for our FMP. Welcome, Akian. Yes. Happy to be here. And then uh, we also have Lena Thompson joining us. She is the Director of Building Operations and Administrative Services for the American Psychological Association. And she actually teaches our Project Management and Operations mo um, and Maintenance module, sorry, uh, of our FMP uh, credential. So welcome. Everybody. Hey, Lena. Mm -hmm. So today we want to remind you that IFMA wants to be a partner with you. And we also want to discuss kind of why life learn uh, lifelong learning matters. So we want you to continue education. We want you to be able to fill any gaps of knowledge that you may have. And we also want you to stay up to date on trends and current, uh, current trends and best practices. We all know that facility management is ever evolving and this is one great way to be able to do that. And we also have a couple of tips and tricks while we go throughout our presentation today to help you with this journey that you're hopefully embarking on. That's right. And it should be a lifelong journey. You should be learning continuously. Um, one thing that I've seen is that the facility management profession continues to expand. It is not contracting. It's ever growing. It's ever changing. And staying on top of what's happening will help you be able to perform your job at your best ability and to advance in your career. So um, this webinar will focus on getting some advice from both Lena and Akian, and uh, we welcome your questions as well. Please make sure that you do put them in. We will address them as we go through our webinar today with these IFMA qualified instructors. So I would say the first question that we have for both of you is what is the one piece of advice you would give to FMs today, um, someone entering the FM field especially? Yeah, so I would say, first of all, congratulations, because you have entered the best, made the best career decision of entering into the FM industry, um, because we're all, as we said before in our vision, trying to make the world a better place. So congratulations for getting on board with us. But one of the things I think one of the major advice is just equip yourself with the competencies you need to apply on your job, to be a success on the job, to be confident on the job. But more than that, immerse yourself in everything that IFMA has to offer. Mm -hmm. Get involved, not only in the training, volunteer, 
um, with your chapter, your councils, you build your competencies by doing that. You, you are now in a profession that you can network with others mm -hmm. in FM to strengthen your, your capabilities and to get best practices within the field. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to offer in the FM industry. Wonderful. And Lena, the same question for you. Um, well, she said, no, seriously, <laughs> uh, you are on point. Like the one thing that I can say that I've learned is to use your network. IFMA yeah. is a great place to start. You made the best decision by even being on the call. If you're not a member, be and become a member. And there are a lot of tools that we offer that a lot of folks don't know about. They think just the credential, but it's not just the credential. It's uh, attending the events and learning from each other, growing your, growing through your network. It creates a net worth. And I can honestly say I spent a lot of time doing that. And it's been, it's been such an amazing experience. So I would say you've made a great start by doing this and get your credential. If you don't have a credential, get one. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And kind of leading into that same advice that you just shared, Lena, how does mm -hmm. a facility professional stand out among their peers in the industry? Well, I'm very proud to say I am an FMP. I don't have a CFM, my, my colleague does. But one the one thing that really has always inspired me is number one, the network. Number two, IFMA's ability to uh, morph and change and we grow constantly. Um, I would say, you know, don't don't just stop. Don't let this be a stopping point. Use all, all the networking tools that you have available. Wonderful. And Akian, same yeah. to you. Yeah, just to add to what uh, Lena is saying, um, it is about lifelong learning mm -hmm. in the FM industry. So to stand out, you need to be in touch with all the relevant changes that are constantly taking and shifting in the FM industry. And IFMA really does the groundwork for you. So once mm -hmm. you, you get involved and pursue the credentials, you know you're equipping yourself um, to really get the job done well. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's important to tap into those credentials along your entire career life cycle, whether you're now joining the FM industry or you are tried and true, you've been in it for 15 plus years like I have, um, you know, it's important to keep relevant and yeah. to understand the changes that are taking place in the FM industry. I, I wanna add to that, Akion. Uh, the, yeah. the one thing that I've really learned is our business partners. A lot of times we call them our associates. A lot of times people don't realize that that is, they are key. They're the, the tradesmiths, they're uh, architects, they are design firms. People like that, getting to know them in this industry is everything. They make us look good. Well, I love I love what you said there, Lena. Um, the the tradesmen, the people in technical, vocational, the services that we rely on, the the, the AC services, the plumbing, the electrical, oh, yeah. they can they as well. They are operating within the built environment, and they can tap in to what IFMA has to offer in terms of getting themselves credential, the yep. credentials they need to operate within the built environment, the facility management industry, yeah. These are uh, fantastic pieces of advice, and I hope everybody that is tuning in, whether it's now while we're live or, or seeing this at a future date, this is evergreen content um, and great advice. Just now I'd like to switch gears from kind of that general advice going into facility training, which both of you are IFMA qualified instructors. And we're so fortunate as an association to have you helping and, and mentoring and teaching these individuals. So kind of going into that, what are some key things you've learned from teaching people? And feel free to share whatever comes to mind, if it's a study timeline, anything that, that you've learned while uh, you've been instructing people? I would say you don't know what you don't know. And it sounds trivial, but it's so true because every day I learn something new and different. So the key things I've learned from teaching people, as I learn more from you all than I, than I gain, than I instruct on, I learn a lot. Um, there are so many things. Um, studying is a critical part of, of getting your FMP. So you get your materials, right? And then you move into reading. 
that their account. And if, if the book says 50 to 60 hours, double that. You're going to have to read it. You have to read the materials that are out there. And um, I would say the study time is critical at, at, um, and during your instructor period. So if you go, even if you're online, you choose a course that's online, studying is going to make it successful. Don't sit down and think you're going to have the instructor go through the material step by step. We're not there for that. We're there to give context to the material. Hopefully that. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I love what, that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like what you said, Lena. Um, I strongly believe the, the credentials were, were designed for the FM learner in mind. So mm -hmm. if you follow the program and you do the preparation that is needed, it is designed for you to be successful if you follow the program. Um, I have seen where um, we've been in classes and I found the students that are most successful are the ones that prepare, yep. are the ones that ask questions, mm -hmm. clarify questions, are the ones who would study along with the instruction. So they don't wait till the end and then they are now trying to start from the beginning. So they, they work alongside the instruction if we're doing o &M, we're studying, we're all in, and we're studying o &M inside out. And by the end of the instruction, they're actually able to do the assessment. Mm -hmm. So by the time, by the by the time you're completed with the four modules, you've already completed the three modules before, and you just have the final module to, to do your final assessment. So it I would say, especially one of the key things is don't wait till the end of the instruction to start your, your real preparation and assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Work alongside with your instructor so that they can support you in clarifying areas, focusing on your weak areas that you, you or feel areas that you feel you need more, more content or, or context on. I love that both Lena and Akian are talking about read the online materials because that is something that I think Gail and I see a number of times. People want to skip that, mm -hmm. go to the final assessment, take those, and just try to pass it. And they're really shortchanging themselves out of a lot of great knowledge right. because it is meant, uh, and and in specific, the FMP and the SFP is meant to teach you. It, it has so much great information, but you're not going to be able to absorb it all from a class. So this might be a great time just to touch on IFMA has several different learning models that you can follow, right? Mm -hmm. There's online materials. When you purchase a program, whether it's to get a credential or to fill in a gap um, of knowledge in and to help you advance or, or take care of something that's landed in your lap, everything IFMA offers is available online. Yeah. The um, instructor model is optional because obviously mm -hmm. self-study is great. You can fit that in whenever it's convenient for you. But what Akian and Lena do is they, as they so eloquently stated, they put it in context and it gives you an opportunity to really talk with someone who is in the industry who can break it down for you, but also will be able to give you a chance to ask questions because maybe you understood the first part of it, but then you get into something that you've not specifically experienced mm -hmm. and they can, they can share that information with you. Yeah. So I love the idea of be prepared, read the material, get the most from your time with these great instructors and your fellow students. So I'm going to go into our next question. I think it leads in really nicely. Where do you suggest people spend extra time with studying? And then kind of a ca an add-on is, what skills gap are you finding most often in the industry? Yeah, thanks for that question, Kim. Um, so this, the answer to this question will be different for each FM Luna. Mm -hmm. Um, you would have to take the time to really assess where your strengths and weaknesses are in terms of your content, where those gaps are. Um, so I would say um, there are tools that um, EFMA provides. You have the career compass, which, which you can start with to see where, which experience level you are at. And then once you decide on a program, there's also, there's also a self-assessment that you can take mm -hmm. um, to determine where your gaps are in terms of the, the content that is provided in the FMP. Where you, so I would say that answer might be different for each learner. 
based on your experience mm -hmm. and based on your background knowledge. But in terms of what skills gap I have seen, I think we are most uncomfortable as FM in the finance area, in the area mm -hmm. of finance. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think because we um, don't operate um, in the background in the finance department, crunching the numbers, we tend to be a little more, um, la have less confidence in that area. So the, um, the, we know that it's a skill that is needed to make our business ca case in terms of getting those funding that we need for those capital projects. Mm -hmm. So I'd say finance is one of the areas that we are less com confident in as FMs. Wonderful. And Lena, how about you? Same question. Well, I agree. I totally agree with you, Akian. The, 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 the skills gap is a big part of the conversation that happens. You should be doing that before you even venture out. So where the question is, where do you spend your extra time? The extra time is making sure that you know your day, how your day to day is working and, and try to include that as a part of your a part of your day. Um, the skills gap is really hard to 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 um, to gauge because you don't know what you don't know, but you have a self-assessment that tool that you can use to to help you to figure that out. And Akian hit on a, a lot of critical points. And I think it's so important for us to make sure we understand what's going on around us so that we can fit it into our day. That's a wonderful point. Um, for those who are listening, IFMA offers a skills assessment. Mm -hmm. If you're a member, it's $25. It's a nominal fee. And if you're not a member, it's only $50. It is very much in depth. Um, IFMA has identified 11 core areas of FM. So we have 11 competency areas. Mm -hmm. And this skills assessment touches on all 11. It has over, I believe it's 200 questions, or is it 300, Gail? It's 300. Uh -huh. 300. <laughs> 300. And, and you can start and come back. You can start and stop, you know, whatever, however it works best for you. But overall, it's going to take you about two hours to complete this. And it is a self-assessment. So we're not saying, oh, you're really knowledgeable in operations and maintenance what you're doing is you're going to be shown a list of questions under operations and maintenance. And then you're going to, on a scale of zero to five, zero, you're not aware of that task or that, or that concept mm -hmm. to five that, yes, I'm, I'm very much uh, familiar with it and kind of a, a master at it. Then you gauge your knowledge. And from that, it will show you where you really need to spend your extra time because as Akian stated, everybody. It's unique. It is unique mm -hmm. to you. And then as Lena shared, it's unique to your role. What is it that you're doing in your day to day? What is it that um, you need to get stronger in? What is it that you don't know? And that I think, you know, for people that don't know what they don't know, mm -hmm. take that self-assessment because it's going to show you maybe some things that you didn't know you didn't know. Even in the quizzes, the, uh, the quiz that you take at the beginning of each chapter or each module, take that first. I know when I was doing it, I took yeah. it and I thought I was oh super smart. No, I came in at less than less than. And it's not to say that you don't know if this mod, the modules are built around industry standards, industry yes. standards. It's not just what you've learned from your organization. I'm not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. You keep some of that and then you use that at, to build upon with the materials that you uh, that you have. And I was going to suggest whenever you're doing your self-assessment tool, be honest. Oh, yeah. Because if you, if you say that you're a three, but you're on the fence, be the two. Yes. This yes. is here to help you see where you want to go. And if you do need to fill that gap, you, now you know. So mm -hmm. be honest. <laughs> that would be my advice. Be honest with yourself. I love it. Yes. 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 Well, I this wish is this tool was out when, when I started because it would have helped me tremendously to figure out what the next steps were in my career path or my credentialing path. And uh, today we have it, which is so amazing. I can't wait to share it with other people. Oh, that's fantastic. So moving on to the next part, really kind of looking at um, this question because Gail and I get asked this a number of times, though there are a lot of different FM credentials and organizations mm -hmm. out there. So, you know, Lena, and Akian, why do you support the FM training from IFMA and in particular the FMP credential, which you both are instructors for? 
Yeah, first of all, Kim, it is ANSI accredited. It's a credential that is, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's designed and it's uh, the assessment and the quality of it has to be monitored to reach those, to meet those standards to be accredited. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be one differentiate, major differentiating factor. Um, I also think that the credentials itself, the FMP, it equips the um, FM, the facility professional, to apply the tools the next day on the job. It yeah. can be immediately applied on the job the next day. So it's not just about collecting a credential. That knowledge is easily transferable to their, your FM practice for, on a day-to-day. -day. There are a lot of tools that are available. The best practices are clear. And you can... Um, you can more or less customize those to suit your the the organization with with with, with in, sorry within which you are operating in. So I love the fact that it's practical and that it's accredited. Wonderful, Lena. How about you? Oh wow, well, where do you start? The credential, as uh, Akian said, thank you. Uh, it it builds upon. I'm sorry. The 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 fact that it's accredited is the, one of the most important things. Yeah. You can get a certificate from somewhere else. And let's go back a little bit because the materials that are produced are produced by some of the best of the best in the industry. It's vetted. It has been, and, and I am a, component, a, a huge component of making sure I understand where, why, how successful I'm going to be and where the materials are coming from. That's important. Um, I support FM training and IFMA credentials. I've been doing this for, gosh, no, I don't, a very long time. And I would not be in a senior role like I am had I not obtained a credential, honest to goodness. And I work for an association that pr promotes education. And if you don't work for an organization that promotes, unfortunately, it's, it's really hard. But I would say make sure that you understand what credential is next and that's going into the assessment portion you mm -hmm. have to do the assessment I've, thanks so much for that lena and what other thing one of the other things that come to mind is that it's globally recognized yes so that's why i am in trinidad and tobago and i could recognize the value of the fmp credential and how it can be applied to my job in this yeah. in this context as well as lena being in the us so it really does cross across um, goes across all national boundaries, industry boundaries, and it, it, and it can be applied across all levels. And it allows us to speak the same language. Yes, um, yes. Which is very I, important. I know one thing that I'd like to share is um, I've been told that by a gentleman who, it works at a smaller organization, and he said going through the FMP exposed him to uh, situations and best practices and and just learning things that he would not have been exposed to in his current role, which sets him up to be able to deal with additional situations yeah. should his, his job change, should he get a job at a company that is larger that would have those other tasks and responsibilities. And I would say that the concepts apply not just in your field, but if you move to a different field, if you're managing a building at a hospital, Mm -hmm. and you move to a school, different fields, yes, but your the same concepts would still apply. So I think that would also be a, a great way for the, the credential to help you out in your career. Well, I'm going to switch to the next question because I think we're kind of diving into it already. You know, how does the FMP address common skills gaps? And, and this is what I'm hearing from our instructors is that you will be doing these daily tasks and and if it's not something that you've been or had an opportunity to learn yet, the FMP is going to help fill in those gaps with best practices at a mm -hmm. global standard. And then within IFMA being ANSI, ANAB accredited, that holds our association and our learning programs to, a, to the highest standard. You know, we do have a third party organization come in and they look at everything that IFMA does and make sure that we're following the best practices for for learning and that our, our learning and teaching methodology is sound and that you're going to walk away with the knowledge that we say you will. 
anything that that we may have missed because I think we did kind of jump ahead a little bit in our conversation about the FMP specifically. I, I think we've covered it in, um, more or less. I think um, the common skills gaps are, are, can be identified by going through the, the program. And then something like aligning how we align our um, FM strategy with our organization strategies, all those things are addressed with the, with, within the content of the FMP. Um, equipping you to understand the specific um, language of finance so that you can make your business case. So the, the, because the FMP program was designed for the FM and we did our groundwork and research and collected data on what those competencies we need to be successful on the job, it means that it, can trans, it, it addresses the gaps that each FM learner may identify for, for their own development. Agreed. And I think that's very well said. Mm -hmm. uh, the Just the names of the competencies are generalized, right, and used in different professions. Project management. This is not project management like you would take for, from PMP. Often we're asked, well, why would, you know, is that the same as what the PMI, you know, Institute offers for the mm -hmm. PMP? And it's, no, this is facility management, project management. So projects that you will be managing as a facility manager, same with leadership and strategy. It's not just soft skills about how to become a better leader and set strategy. It, it truly is leading from um, through facilities management. And one thing I've seen is a lot of times you're not the, the main decision maker. You, know, you have a task. You have to get all of these other departments to buy into it and work with them and get them to kind of go along with what the facilities team is going to be doing. Um, and just that takes a skill set and it takes understanding how to work with people. It does. I'm glad you said that. It triggered a thought in my head. Um, in, in my teachings, I found that uh, even someone with project management experience struggled with the project management module itself because of what they thought they knew versus applying it to facilities management. And that's common. And Akian said something earlier about financials. Um, most of the time, we're not at the table. We're not uh, in those budget conversations, but we're accountable for millions of dollars. And so understanding the language that finance speaks, understanding the tools that they use, understanding how accounting, the back end of it works, is important, and if you don't have that as, as a skill set, hopefully the FMP will get you there, uh, and as a module, as a part of it, and it's it's addressed. And the great thing about the FMP is that it addresses all the core competencies within uh, within the whole FMP program, and I think that's that will help a lot with the skill set, help you to address uh, where those gaps could be. Because I mm -hmm. thought I was super smart in finance, and I found out that I didn't know a whole lot. <laughs> and and I really hone in on it because we we have to make them our business partners. When you think when talking finance, you should have a business partner that you can talk to or go to to help you through. And that's a that's kind of addressed in in uh, the FMP module. Fantastic. Yeah, the FMP is the foundational competencies. Mm -hmm. um, it is operations and maintenance, of course, is the lifeblood, I think, of facilities. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to operate and maintain the building so that people can use it for its function and its purpose. Then you've got project management. You're always with op within operations and maintenance. You have projects that you have to manage. As you say, finance, other than um, payroll, the building, the facility running it is the second largest expense. Yeah. And so companies need to know that their facilities team understand mm -hmm. the, um, the, the part that they play, the role they play. And I love what you said about not being at the table when budget is set, but you have to live within that budget and figure out how am I going to get this done? Yeah. Everything that they have on my to-do list with the money that they've given me. Mm -hmm. And then you've got leadership and strategy and the fourth one, or maybe we did cover it, project management, it. finance, yeah. and business. Yep. Yeah. All of those foundational. Um, so yeah. as, as we come in and you guys are 
you're in your class, you're working with your students. How do you help students kind of dig into the coursework? Yeah, um, so one of the things I like to encourage is sharing experiences. Mm -hmm. um, students, uh, the FM learners can't solely rely on the instructor mm -hmm. that, to, to fill all the gaps because our, as instructors, we also don't know everything and we may not have experience related to the industry you're working in or a particular area in the content. So we love to, to draw from the experience that, are, that is represented in the classroom. Um, the other thing is be prepared, as we mentioned before, it's important to review the content even before the first class mm -hmm. so that you can prepare with what are some of those things you need, the points you need clarified. Um, so you can share it in the class or provide the, uh, the instructor with the opportunity to address it when we are delivering the content. It enriches the experience and makes mm -hmm. it more relevant to the learner by doing that. Um, also, um, we help by ensuring that they can go through the, the assessments. Um, if there's anything they don't understand, they will get back to us. We try to clarify, but that relationship and that communication is very important. And that's what we encourage. Do you ever have people kind of get stuck? I mean, how do you encourage them? What, yeah. what do y'all, what do y'all hear in, in your real world classes? Well, real, real world talk. Um, most students don't come prepared which makes it harder for us, but we're still there. And I always say, when I start, when I start out a class, um, I serve me as a resource tool for you when you are doing, going through this process. You're gonna need everything, everybody, every piece of material, online information, content, but give yourself a little bit of grace, okay? Mm -hmm. we, as we are adult learners, sometimes we forget. I haven't been to class in a classroom in 10 years, so some of us have been in a classroom two weeks ago, and they're a lot more comfortable being, a, being in, a, in a virtual or in-person environment. But the most important thing that you can do is be honest with where you are and use your instructor as a resource. Um, mm -hmm. it is, it is def, that's what we're here for. If you take the uh, in-person or online course, come prepared. As Akian mm -hmm. said, utilizing your resources, your, your, con, your materials, asking those relevant questions, relying on us to be there as a part of that. And the other significant one that she mentioned, which is uh, each other. And I see this a lot, like other students don't feel comfortable reaching out. So more and more, I try to put them in the classroom environment so they can get to know each other. But when we do in person, it's very fluid. It can become very fluid. But the hardest part for us connectively in teaching is that you read through the materials write down those notes, ask us those important questions, because we may not have those answers, but your colleagues may, or mm -hmm. we may be able to pull something up online. So I would say uh, that would really be helpful. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree with Lena. One of the things I have found for the students who do reach out, uh, it gives you an opportunity to really fine tune um, the understanding of the content, because mm -hmm. the material is all there, but it's just, the opportunity to talk it through. So sometimes you may not want to address it in the class, but you can reach out. As Lena said, we are a resource. We, we encourage students to reach out and we would address the concerns, whether it's via an email or a quick call. We, we do have those stories where we held some student's hand through the process mm -hmm. and they, they ended up being successful. I love it. So, th so those are some of the challenges and that's why I've put up this kind of this next section is just the challenges that um, people are facing. I know Gail and I talk with a number of people and being adult learners, they're balancing so many other things. They're balancing their, their current role and their responsibilities at work with a family. Um, you know, so they're trying to get that work-life balance um, just trying to complete a course or a credential, mm -hmm. what have you found, you know, whether it's been shared directly with you or the advice that you give to others to overcome these challenges? 
Lena, let's go ahead and start with you. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a major concern because if you get frustrated with not being able to pass the class, a class in particular, um, what I've heard from my students is that they kind of hit a brick wall. They become uh, dismayed with not being able to complete it. So I would I ask them questions like, have you really read all the material? Have you taken the time to do that? Have you done the online quizzes? Because I think they help significantly. Have you looked at the um, materials that reference that are referenced inside the chapters? Have you really done all of that? And if you, because I find that that's usually the problem, uh, that people haven't read through the materials and they aren't asking themselves those very very important questions. Um, the other thing is that uh, you know using each other, and I have uh, I mentioned part your business partners. If there's mm -hmm. a specific area in O and M, like you can ask your business partners if you have business business partners, what are their thoughts? Reaching out, using your network, and mm -hmm. it's so important to do that. Uh, <clears throat> I, I've had my own personal challenges when teaching the class uh, with students who've taken the test three times and they have to wait another thirty days. There are tools on the back end of the FMP program that help you to see where your areas are, um, where you're falling a little bit short. And I say that's for probably the first place to go. That's yeah. great advice, Akian. Yeah, I agree with you, Lena. Um, the tools are there um, to support, to help you get through those challenges on the IFMA learning platform, the FM training platform. Um, one of the things I have also uh, found is that because it's self-paced, really um we, yes we are adult learners we have all the challenges we know and as an fm you're on call we have chat you know many things competing out without time mm -hmm. um so it because it's self-paced that kind of positions you already to kind of plan your your life in a way that you can go through the preparation and spend time preparing and doing the assessments and you know so i think the flexibility of the program helps with those with, with that challenge of that um you know having all of these competing interests and being able to carve out time to actually pursue the credential and get it and get it done mm -hmm. i think that that is fantastic and i think it's just continue to carve out the time and read through the material use utilize the resources that are available mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go to this one, Lena and Akian. If you wanted everyone to know one thing about IFMA training, what would you want them to know? I would say, um, first of all, with IFMA, the IFMA training, it is designed for the FM, for the FM learner to be successful, not only in terms of knowledge acquisition, getting that in, information on best practices in terms of facility management but it also provides the tools needed to succeed on the job that application yeah. part is what trumps um ifma ifma's program um i would say too that because it is such a global um the content can be applied globally across every single territorial border whether it's in the us or the europe or the middle east Caribbean, the content can be applied across the national context, as well as I love the fact that it does not matter what industry you're representing, the knowledge can be applied and, and uh, customized to suit the industry within your, your which you're working. So I, um, you know, that's what I would say in terms of, of the, what one thing I would say about um, pursuing the FM training. I love it. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And you're talking about the global application. I'm looking at um, our folks that have been joining. Uh -huh. and it, there's all locations that are here. Yeah. And check that out. Hello, Vaughn in Trinidad. <laughs> Hello, Vaughn. <laughs> so we've, we have a number of folks that have come in and yeah. Here we go from the Philippines. Hi, oh, Nestor. Yeah. 
All right. So I'm, I'm kind of coming through because I know that we've received some questions. And, uh, but real quick, hello, Roberto from Orlando. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of folks that are saying hello. Huh? Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so here's an interesting question from Michael. Does the FMP help with the ISO 41001 process? I don't know if it gets into granular details like that. Um, I would say it does in the context that you are already following what is industry best practices related to FM. Mm -hmm. So your knowledge with the FMP can easily help you translate to up applying the ISO um, thousand process within your organization. It, it will bring greater, you would have that, um, you'll be already equipped with that knowledge to be able to translate that process, that standard on your job. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Lena, anything to add? No, she hit it right on the head, nail on the head. Okay, fantastic. Um, here's a comment. Good clarification between project management and facility rated project management. Mm -hmm. So definitely, and and I do this often, mm -hmm. this type of facility. Yeah, I, I when I'm typing, sometimes I'm moving a little bit too quickly. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I think that we've probably done a really good job of answering some questions because it's more comments that are, are more about um, what, what is involved in the FMP, um, the advice from both Lena and Akian about how to prepare, you know, if you're going to be taking a class, what should you do? So that is one thing that's really sticking out to me is both of you encouraging people to read the material before they go into a class. And I, I can speak just from IFMA, everything you need to know to be successful on the self-assessment is in the online learning materials. Mm -hmm. Going into a virtual class, which um, we do have virtual classes offered, it's once a week for 90 minutes, but you're given homework before that particular class with the live instructor, and that is to read the chapter because our instructors have great knowledge and experience that they're bringing to the classroom. Um, you're able to ask questions, get information. You're networking with other FMs who are also in that learning process, but there's no way that uh, they can cover every little thing that's in each chapter and there's also no way if you haven't read that chapter that you're going to be able to comprehend and retain that and then pass the final assessment. So there is work on each of us as we're going through and learning. But this is this is some advice that I've heard in the past and, and this also resonated. Invest in yourself. That's what this is. Yeah. Put yourself first. Um, a lot of FMs that I know you guys are incredibly service-minded. You're here to make sure that others are able to do their job, that the buildings are taken care of, and you're taking care of everybody else but yourself. So this is your, your opportunity. Put yourself first. It will help you be able to do a better job, but also it's going to put you in a position to advance in your career, to either get that promotion into a new position or to go and grow into another organization that will be able to utilize the skills that you've grown and that you're mastering throughout your process. And then I will encourage anyone who has been a facility manager for more than five years, take that self-assessment test because you may be ready, Lena, <laughs> to um, sit for your CFM exam and to become yeah. a CFM. But whether you're ready for a credential or not, continue learning. IFMA has individual courses that will help you fill in gaps. You don't have to have the whole enchilada on your plate. You yeah. can just start off with an appetizer, maybe go into real estate or take a sustainability course if you want to dive a little bit more into that before you go for a credential. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Kim, um, one, one quick yes. thing. I just should have yes. something in my head. The FMP is one of the few, not like the CFM, you if you take the FMP and you pass, it's yours. Nobody can yes. take it away from you. No more applying and recertifying and all of that. Once you go through the program and, and get your cert certificate, you are done. 
but all, but it also enhances. I love a little bit of alphabet soup behind my name, and that that is so important when you see uh, someone's <laughs> credentials and stuff. You're like, oh, I got that. That was that. Was, I was very passionate about that when I when I first ventured out. I didn't think I would become an instructor, but because of that, it, it became like a little baby to me. And the other thing is that. We as uh, instructors don't know everything. Don't think we're coming to class or not. Some of us may have engineering background, but I don't. I don't have a full on HVAC background. I know just enough to be dangerous, but I know even more to how to instruct you on how to pass the class. So, but I don't know everything, but please use your tools. It's a huge toolkit that we have. It's not just IFMA, it's our business partners and our colleagues. Absolutely. And you're right. The FMP is a lifelong credential. You will always have it. The SFP as well. Yes. Um, these are meant to provide you with learning, with training. The CFM tests you on your knowledge and expertise. There's no training required for that. But for the FMP and the SFP, we give you all of the materials to learn. And then once you achieve it, it's yours. An alphabet soup. People right. will respect you, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it shouldn't matter, but it does. It just gives a certain level of recognition that you do know what you're doing, that it's not just something on your resume. If you're an FMP, then you've got a fantastic, strong foundation yeah. in all of this. And Vaughn added here, which speaking of alphabet soup, congratulations, Vaughn, CFM, SFP, FMP, and PMP, just to round it all out. Um, really encouraging people to set up a study schedule from the beginning. Absolutely. And obviously it's worked for Vaughn. Yes. And then I believe... Uh, here, we also have some advice from Gavin, who says, I found the PDM info as opposed to the online slides much easier to use. And if you read it a few times, it's much easier to refer in future if you come across a real life situation in the real world. That's my view. Other ways may work better for others. So what, what Gavin is mentioning is there is a PDF flip book. Mm -hmm. um, it is something that you can download to any one of your mobile devices and read it as you would a regular book. And so that, depending on where you are, that gives you a little more flexibility to go through those online materials and to take it in. And I believe both Lena and Akian mentioned, read it a few times. It's, yeah. it's not just going to be one pass and, and you're going to retain all of it. Really study it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we, as we wrap things up, um, is there anything that you would like to leave people with? Any bit of wisdom or just a final comment? Um, and we'll start with Akian first. Yeah, thanks for that, Kim. I really strongly believe in what IFMA is doing, equipping the FM professionals with the competencies needed to apply successfully on the job. And it is about lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. and you can partner with IFMA, regardless what, what I like to call where you are in your career life cycle, whether you're just starting out, whether you're midway there, whether you're you know, on the, the end side of it. Um, and they have, we have the tools needed um, to keep us relevant on our jobs, regardless of where you are in your FM journey. Um, I would say go for it. Don't stop. Keep learning. Keep growing with IFMA. And get involved. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. You learn a lot by yes. doing that as well. Yes. Lena? I would love to keep checking your boxes. You are so eloquent. I love you. I would say <laughs> I, I, I am not just drinking the Kool-Aid of IFMA. I am also making some in the back room over here. I believe in the, the, the standards, the best practices, the tools that are out there. Uh, my passion is making sure I impart the best information. The mission and the vision of IFMA, I stand on. I believe that we are taking care of and, and preparing each of you to maintain the built environment as we move forward. And what better way to do it than be, get your credential so you can prove to them, I've studied, I've taken the time to understand what our communities need, what my organization needs. And the best part about it is that you get to grow professionally. You get to network. You have something that is for you that nobody can take away. And uh, you get to meet wonderful people in the IFMA community by volunteering and it builds character. It builds upon the knowledge that you have and nothing is more important than that. 
So take advantage of the opportunities that are there. As Akian said, volunteer. One thing, all you need to do is volunteer for one thing within your organization or within your within the IFMA community. And I guarantee you, you will grow professionally. I guarantee you can find me. Not, note to self, Lena said, I will grow professionally once I volunteer. I love that, Lena. Love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. So Daniela, working busily in the background, if we can pull the slide deck back up, we have a special gift for those of you who have joined us and have been um, enjoying all of the great advice. Uh, Gail, I'm going to let you take it away. Absolutely. So um, as you saw in a previous banner, you do not have to be an IFMA member to take advantage of our training that we do offer. Um, we, we do want to part with a gift. So if you use these codes, fall into learning 50, that would take $50 off of your essential series or one of the individual standalone competencies. If you are looking to be a credential holder, you can turn the fall into learning 100, put that into your discount code and you'll save $100 off your FMP or your SFP or the core competency course bundle. And these discounts will be good through the end of September. Yes, and feel free to share that as well. We want everybody to um, learn and grow and be successful. Uh, you know, everybody, IFMA has been around for over 40 years. And the reason why we started, and it started with a group of individuals, including George Graves, who um, used to come and visit our offices here in Houston. He's one of our founding fathers. Uh, it was so that a group of people who are like, hey, what we do is important. And, and it's facilities management. Yeah, so let's call it facilities management. And from those early days, this profession has taken off and it is critical to the success of, I think, every single organization that is out there. If your facility is not run and operated efficiently, you're going to be losing money hand over fist. You're going to have people that do not want to work for you. They will not stay with you. If the bathrooms aren't working, if you can't get a decent cup of coffee, if the servers are crashing because it's hot in that server room, which I don't know if it's still a thing because, you know, technology continues to advance. <laughs> But without facility managers really being able to go in there and take care of all of the things that it takes to take care of a building, um, our, our society would not be where it is today. We wouldn't have pop-up hospitals in parking lots to take care of things. When we have an unprecedented global pandemic that hit us, the health and safety of everybody coming in and figuring out what door does everybody come in or leave out of, and is it safe to come back? Well, wait a minute, hold off. We're going to get you set up at your home office. There's so much that facility managers touch on, and IFMA is here to support you through what we've seen in the past and then whatever may be facing us in the future. And we are so glad that you're a part of this. Um, if you're not a part of IFMA, please check us out. There's um, corporate connections at IFMA.org. If you have any questions, anything, maybe you were shy about putting a comment in, please send us an email and we will be glad to get back with you. Uh, we just thank you so much for joining us and I'm gonna let Gail lead us out. Yes, well said. Thank you both, Lena and Akian, for joining us today. Um, and as Kim mentioned, if you are at the end of this recording and we're no longer live, if you have any questions, any comments, concerns, Corporate Connections at IFMA.org will definitely point you in the right direction, get your, answer, your questions answered. Um, and thank you again so much for joining us today. We really do want to help get the word out for facility management, for facility managers. Um, again, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Yes. Thank you.